Star Wars, da 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 Star Wars, da 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 Star Wars, da da Star Wars. Oh man, have you seen Rogue One yet? It's not perfect, but holy shit, the space battles are amazing. Probably the best in the series since the original trilogy. And that got me thinking about my favourite Star Wars game ever, Rogue Leader. I know for many, Knights of the Old Republic is the greatest Star Wars game, but for me, Star Wars is all about those space battles and Rogue Leader's twitchy, arcade simplicity captures the essence of them perfectly. It starts off with the Death Star. What a first level. There were attempts at doing the Death Star before, of course, but I think this was the one that truly did it justice. Switch the camera to cockpit view and it feels like you're actually in the film. It's also the perfect introduction to Rogue Leader's arcade gameplay. You get a simple goal and you go for it. Destroy the turrets, gun down the TIE fighters, get to the end of the trench and blast that exhaust. It's simple, edge of your seat excitement, just like the films. You'd think it'd all be downhill from there, but Rogue Leader gets better at capturing those beautiful Star Wars moments as it goes on. The Battle of Hoth has been done a million times, but this is the one for me. Starting with a breathless rush over the snowy mountains, complete with the movie soundtrack before all chaos ensues in the battlefield. The mess of laser fire coming from ground troops, walkers and speeders and reflecting off the beautiful snowy battlefield really brings the level to life. Yes, there are a few filler missions in Rogue Leader that aren't from the films, but only a couple of them are duds, thankfully. And to be honest, I've never really cared about them being there, because I've always had so much fun replaying the movie missions. When I was wee, I would spend hours just flying around Bespin, refusing to finish the mission objectives and just taking time to fly through the cityscape and listen to that beautiful music. Destroy that last power generator and defend those platforms. But probably the greatest part of Rogue Leader, for me, is the one-two punch at the end, with the Battle of Endor and the destruction of the second Death Star. This space battle is probably the toughest in the game, with dozens of TIE fighters and bombers to destroy, and wingmen dying left, right and centre. It really captures the feeling of hopelessness against the Empire forces. The level ends with probably the closest thing to a boss fight Rogue Leader has, bringing down two Star Destroyers at once. I'm not going to deny I tore my hair out a few times in this one, but I love it all the same. And then that ending. The rush to the core of the Death Star is probably the closest thing we'll get to a Star Wars game made by Nintendo's Star Fox team. It feels like a proper on-rails arcade experience, diving straight through a hail of laser fire before flying through the tight corridors of the Death Star interior, all while taking down TIE Fighters. This is what Star Wars means to me. And Rogue Leader has been and probably always will be the fulfilment of that wish that I'm sure every kid that was obsessed with Star Wars had to be a pilot in one of those amazing on-screen space battles. So, if you're a Star Wars fan who loves those space battles as much as I do, get involved with Rogue Leader. Going on 15 years from its release, it's still my favourite Star Wars game ever made.